In this video, I'm going to show you how to grow any type of tomato in a container successfully. Hey, I'm Brian with Next Level Gardening. If you're looking to join an online garden community that offers tips, tricks, and support, you're in the right place. Get started now by clicking subscribe and hit the bell so you never miss anything. Now let's get growing. Whether you have a patio, a balcony, uh, maybe even an in-ground garden, raised bed gardens, or an acre, you still might want some more room. Don't we all want more room? And it's easy to tuck containers here and there. But if you've ever tried growing uh, tomatoes in containers, you might have had some problems. Now, I did a video a couple of days ago on growing vegetables in containers, growing any vegetable in a container. If you didn't see that, I'll link it down below. But there are a few things that keep uh, tomatoes in kind of a, a separate league of their own. And there's a few things we need to know to grow tomatoes in containers successfully. In the first segment here, it's going to apply to all types of tomatoes, indeterminate, uh, determinate, and cherry tomatoes. In the second segment, I'm going to show you how to support each of those types in a container. It's not quite as easy as in the ground. So following all these things, you're going to be able to harvest some really sweet, juicy tomatoes Homegrown, of course, because are there really any other kind? Comment down below if you don't think store-bought tomatoes should even be able to carry the name tomato. For the most part, tomatoes in containers need the same thing that tomatoes in the ground need, right? Except they can't just put their roots out a little further to find what they're looking for. They are in a container, they are confined, and you have to supply all of that. So they need the same amount of water, the same amount of nutrients, but in a container, they dry out quicker than in the ground. Um, the, the fertilizer leaches out the bottom a lot faster than it leaches out of your soil in a raised bed or uh, in-ground garden. Now in the video I did a couple days ago, we talked about the optimum container size for a lot of different vegetables. Um, and for tomatoes, I said five gallons minimum. I stand by that, it's only two days later, but that is minimum, and that is for a determinate tomato, um, a small type of tomato that isn't going to go crazy. Because really, the size of the container um, is all about the size of the plant. Because the size of the plant, if it's a large plant, it's gonna have a large root system, and you need to accommodate that with a larger container. So I am going to be using a 20 gallon fabric pot from Grassroots, who I recently, yes, two days ago, partnered with, and I, I kind of let you know how that went, how that came to be. Um, I've been using their fabric pots for two, a um, little over two years now. And when I used fabric pots in the past, more than two and a half years ago, I almost swore them off because I live in a dry climate. And if you live in a dry climate and have tried fabric pots, they leave a lot to be desired because they dry out very quickly. The sides are open to the air on all sides. And so the sun, just natural evaporation, you have, I was in the summer, I was watering them two to three times a day and they were still getting dry pockets. Um, a lot of the fabric pots out there are black, which draws in heat. Don't know why they make them black, but anyway, Grassroots has come up with a great solution to that problem. And I, like I said, I've been trying them now for two and a half years. They have a waterproof, first of all, they're not black. There is really beautiful beigey tan color that weathers very well. If you can see these back here, um, I've got two dahlias in them. And these pots are two and a half years old. These were some of the first ones that I had. And I think they look great. But they're really easy to wash. You can actually put them in your washing machine if you want to. This is a waterproof liner. Now that keeps the water from evaporating and from draining out all sides of the pot. Now, if you know anything about fabric pots, one of the main reasons to grow in them is because they air prune. When the roots hit the side of the fabric pot, they detect air on the outside. And so they immediately stop growth of that root at that end and put the hormone back into the root where it sends out side roots. Now that is gonna keep the plant from becoming pot bound. If you pull out a uh, plant out of its pot and you see the roots wrapping around and around, mostly near the bottom, 
that is what's called being pot bound or root bound, and that is bad for the plant. That actually strangles the plant. They use up all the soil down there. It's just all roots, so they dry out very quickly. Being against the edge of the pot, which is where those roots mainly congregate, the sun is hitting that pot, heating up the roots. It's not a good situation. So we've got the waterproof liner. However, there is a three inch ring at the bottom where usually the roots coil that is left strictly fabric. So the pots do everything they need to do. They don't drain or evaporate too quickly, but they still air prune where it's needed. So if you live in a dry climate, they have this type. If you live in a wet climate, uh, humid, hot summers with maybe some rain, they have the same beautiful and well-made bags. I gotta tell you, every seam is like triple stitch. It is so strong. These are gonna last for years. So if you live in a wet climate, they also have the traditional type of fabric pot that doesn't have that liner. So this is gonna be great for tomatoes because when you grow a tomato in a container, you don't want it to dry out, especially wet, dry, wet, dry. That causes a few problems. Number one, it causes your tomatoes to crack. If you've ever had tomatoes or seen tomatoes that have this cracking on them, that is from inconsistent watering. Um, when a tomato dries out, uh, the tomato kind of shrinks up a little bit, not like a sun-dried tomato, but it shrinks. And then when you water it, it sucks up all the water it can. And just like a human who grows too fast and gets stretch marks, tomatoes get crack, uh, cracks. The skin can't hold all of that water and that expansion and they crack. Now you can still eat the tomato, just cut those cracks away because mold and, and dirt and stuff gets in there. Now, inadequate watering or um, uneven watering can also cause things like blossom end rot. Blossom end rot is so frustrating. If you've grown tomatoes and you, you're excited to see them start ripening, and then all of a sudden at the bottom, they get this brownish black mushy spot that is blossom end rot. And that is caused by uh, not enough calcium getting into the tomato, into the plant. Now, a lot of people think, okay, we gotta add calcium to the soil. In the ground, that's not necessarily the case. There's usually plenty of calcium in the soil. It's just not getting up to your plant because it's not being watered properly and the plant needs water to pull those nutrients into itself. So I'm gonna show you what we do to keep all those things from happening in a pot. Now I'm gonna be using a 20 gallon fabric pot. That's plenty big. And I'm gonna be filling it with half uh, potting soil, organic potting soil and half mushroom compost. And you can use all potting soil, you can use mushroom compost, you can use uh, um, homemade compost for sure. If you're using straight compost, you wanna mix perlite or something into it to give it better drainage. What you don't wanna use is garden soil. Garden soil is too heavy, it will compact the roots, it's gonna starve the roots of oxygen, you don't wanna use that in a pot. But we're not gonna fill this pot up all the way, we're gonna fill it up a third of the way with whatever medium you're going to be using. And if you've seen my tomato seed starting videos, you know I do it the same way in a red solo cup. I fill it a third of the way and put the seed in and then I let the plant start to grow. As the plant grows, I fill more soil into the cup because the great thing about tomatoes is they're one of the only plants that do this, at least crop type plants, they grow roots all along their stem. Wherever their stem touches the soil, they put down roots. So as it grows up through this pot and you're putting more soil in, it's now adding more roots. So this entire cup is filled with roots. Let's take a look at it. Got a great root system all the way through. So once we have the uh, soil in here a third of the way, then we're gonna put in some nutrients just as an insurance policy. The first thing we're gonna put in is a source of calcium. Now I use gypsum. It's actually very uh, inexpensive to use and it gives the soil the calcium that it needs. Now in the ground, I don't do this because I know in the ground there's plenty of calcium unless you have a very rare type of soil, um, but that's unlikely. But in a pot, I just like to put that in there just for some insurance. Tomatoes also require magnesium for good fruiting. Now in the soil, most likely you've got plenty of magnesium in your garden soil, but in a pot, we don't know. So just as an insurance policy, we're gonna add 
uh, some Epsom salts. This is the only time that you will see me using Epsom salts in the garden. I know that Epsom salts are the be all miracle cure for just about everything if you look on Pinterest and some other websites, but I'm telling you, Epsom salts can cause more harm than good. I will put, I did a whole video on this. I'll put a link down below. So I'm gonna put in both of these, gypsum and the uh, Epsom salts, about a half of a cup to a huge pot like this. If it's a smaller pot, just a handful of each. Now I also wanna get the tomatoes started off um, with some NPK, some nitrogen, some phosphorus and potassium. And so I use, of course, you can use any organic fertilizer. I use Neptune's Harvest, crab and lobster, and kelp meal. Now I've mixed it all in one here. It, it comes in two different things. I mix it in one just so I don't have to lug buckets everywhere. But I'm gonna put two handfuls uh, in of this. So one handful of crab and lobster, one handful of kelp meal. The crab and lobster is great because it's literally ground up crab shells. Um, and so it's, they're in different sizes. There's tiny little particles and then there's actually chunks that you can you know, see a piece of shell. And that, makes it all break down at different, at different speeds. So this is a uh, immediate release and a slow release. And now it's time to plant our tomato. And we're going to plant it, uh, dig a hole in the third uh, full potting soil. And we're gonna put it in here, just about to the level that it was growing at. And we're gonna just let it sit for a week or so even a few days is fine, just to kind of start to get established in here. And then in a week or so, uh, I'm gonna start filling in more compost, more potting soil around this tomato and, and keep filling it in as it grows. Now you can pull off the leaves that will be under the soil, um, but you don't have to do that. Always leave, always leave about that many, <laughs> let me pull this off always leave about that many leaves uh, above the soil. You, you still need it to photosynthesize even as it's building its root system. So you can keep filling that up over the coming weeks as it grows until it's about two inches below the top of the pot. And then you can stop, that leaves room for water and fertilizer, things like that. Keep it well watered. Like we said, tomatoes need consistent water. The soil really does need to stay consistently moist, not super wet and don't overwater it. Use your finger. Put your finger in the soil every few days, about two inches deep. If you feel moisture, don't water it. If you don't, water it. Looks can be deceiving. Just because the top of the soil looks dry, usually that's not the case underneath. Make sure your container is in full sun. That means it receives at least six hours of direct sunlight every single day. In the summer, if you have a really hot, hot summer, tomatoes, once the temperatures get into the upper 80s, and, in, and above, um, they start to drop their blossoms, which means no fruit for however long it takes that heat to be done with. So you can help with that by throwing over some 35% shade cloth, just throw it over your plants in the middle of the day, just to protect them from some of that heat. Now, in terms of fertilizing throughout the season, um, you can use an organic liquid fertilizer. I use Neptune's Harvest tomato and veg formula. And you can use it full strength, as the bottle says, every uh, other week, or you can use it half strength every week. The reason I do it half strength every week is just in case the watering between the two leaches it out of the soil, I replenish it. All right, I'm gonna walk you through as if this were three different types of tomatoes because each type of tomato, indeterminate, determinate, and cherry, are all gonna be supported differently. So let's start with a uh, determinate plant. That's a plant that grows about four feet tall, like a Roma, uh, produces all of its fruit, and then it's done. For that, you can use a tomato cage from the garden center. Make sure you get a strong one though, because a lot of them fall apart before you even get them home. So what we're gonna do is we're just, we're gonna put it upside down though. We're not gonna stick the points into the pot. We're gonna put the circle in the pot. And then kind of twist it, nestle it down in there a little bit. And then I'm gonna take a zip tie and lash the tops together. Pull it really tight. That is gonna be enough support for your determinate tomato plant. 
You can then tie it to the different rings on here just to support it further or just let the to train the branches to kind of grow out the sides. That's all it needs. Now, if this is a, ch a cherry tomato, we're gonna start the same way. And we're gonna put this right over this one. The four ends go down through that ring. And then we're gonna use um, zip ties to lash this together. About three, all the way around. All right, now you've got a strong support. If you get a lot of wind, typically as the plant grows, it's gonna hang on to it, um, but you might uh, put a stake down the middle and just kind of hook this to that if you get a lot of wind, otherwise it's gonna be pretty good. Now, what if it is an indeterminate? Indeterminates grow and grow and grow until the cold weather comes to kill them. So depending on your weather, you could get a really long season. Now, as you know, if you've seen any of my tomato videos, I single stem my indeterminate tomatoes. I grow them up a string. That just means that we take out all of the side branches. So when the stem is growing up, you'll have a leaf coming out this way, and then there'll be a little growth right there in that little armpit or that bend. I take out all of those all the way up the stem all season long because those take a lot of the plant's energy and don't produce very many, if any, tomatoes. So here's the way to do that. You're gonna get four stakes. Now these can be tree branches, these are eucalyptus. Um, I used to use bamboo stakes, or you can use uh, any kind of wood from the hardware store, some thin furring strips. And we're gonna use four. Now this is easier to do when the pot is completely full of soil. Uh, as you know right now, it's only a third full, so you can wait until it's full. But right now, just for show, we're gonna put this, these four in. So for this, zip ties don't work. They don't hold it steady. They allow it to move around a lot. So I'm gonna be using some wire. I don't know what gauge this is. What is it? This is 16 gauge wire. I'm just gonna cut off a little bit. All right, up near the top of the shortest one. We're gonna tie it together and twist it tight. And then we're gonna run this in and out of some of the branches just to make it even stronger. Just kind of sewing it together. Now, if you live in, um, a climate where you can grow tomatoes all the way into, let's say, September, that means you have a long tomato season. And so you can use one of these hooks, uh, the hook method. These are available on my website, nextlevelgardening.tv. And uh, this allows you to lower the tomato as it grows, because as you know, an indeterminate will grow and grow and grow. You could get 16 to 20 foot long vines, but if you had a 16 to 20 foot high trellis, you're not gonna be able to reach the top. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some string from this hook and we're gonna tie it to a landscape staple or a piece of wire just folded in half. And we are going to stick it in the soil right around the tomato. Loop it around a couple of times. And then we're gonna take this right up to that wire and hang it on. Now, as the tomato grows, you're going to wrap the tomato vine around this string. That's gonna be its support. Once the tomato vine reaches the top, you take the hook off, you unwind it one time, and you hang it back up. That will lower the tomato vine down, so the vine is getting longer, but it's not getting taller. At the bottom, you can wind it around itself, just like a hose. When you wind a hose up on the ground, same thing, all season long, when it hits the top, Unwind the string one time, hang it back up. When it hits the top, unwind the string one time, hang it back up. Now, indeterminates are the only ones you prune. We do not prune cherry tomatoes and we do not prune determinate tomatoes. 
unless it's just for shape. If they're getting a little bit outside of where they need to be, you can prune them for shape. Now, I mentioned earlier that there is a giveaway going on right now. It started two days ago on the other video that I did. Um, Grassroots is providing us with several different fabric containers to give away. There's three ways to win, and you have until May 7th to enter. Number one, you subscribe to this channel, Next Level Gardening. Um, comment on this video down below. Comment what you'll use these pots for, these, these fabric pots. The second way to win is to go back to the video from two days ago. I linked it down below. Watch it if you haven't. And comment on that video, same thing. The third way to win is over on Instagram, Next Level Gardening on Instagram. Uh, two days ago, I put a post. That's the thumbnail for the video for two days ago. You comment on that video and follow me on Instagram. That's the third way to win. So I'll be choosing a winner after the 7th. And on the 8th or the 9th, I will do another video announcing the winners of the, the giveaway. Now, I will not contact the winner in the comments. I will not do that. I will announce it on the video. If you get a comment saying you won, that's a scam, especially if it's a WhatsApp number, even if it has my logo, that's a scam. All right, good luck to everyone, both in the giveaway and in your tomato season if you're growing in containers. If you learned something, give the video a thumbs up. Please consider subscribing if you haven't. Um, and then pass it along to a friend. Share this video with a friend on social media. I'd appreciate it. Hopefully the friend will as well. I'll see you guys next time.